All right, everybody, let's get started. First of all, thanks for having this one part of your day. I am Namgyu Park, a maintainer of Thomas Chaos and also a CNCF ambassador. Here's our today's agenda, talking about why programming dispute application is challenging and the average of cost of downtime and impact of chaos, uh, impact of outages, sorry. Uh, what is chaos engineering and litmus chaos? And last, uh, last but least, I'm gonna show you a demo. Here's my favorite quote from Andy. Uh, if you don't know why it's working when it's working, you don't know how to fix it when it breaks. The reason why I'm mentioning these quotes is distributed applications are hard to know what's happening. A long time ago, we used a simple architecture. We have only one front end, back end, and database. As you can see, each component calls each other. And time passed, Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies changed our era. We now can separate our applications by domain, location, and functionality. As the overall architecture has become more complex, it has become challenging for developers to comprehend distributed system. Here's Uber architecture. It's really complex and not easy to understand. We now need to consider rate limiting for tolerance, latency, availability, and extra. Yes, unlike our expectation, cloud native technologies have frustrated us. Uh, it's not a silver brand, you know? Yeah, according to the Stack Overflow's 2024 developer survey, developers' common frustrations are about complexity, reliability, and maintenance issue. Because the average developer is only responsible for a few of the my, many microservices. So when something goes wrong, it delays the time to fix it, which can be costly. Small business costs $25,000 per hour because of the downtime, and Fortune 1,000 companies spend $1 million per hour. That's something what we want to do, and that downtimes are something we want to avoid. So what can we do to prevent outages? As a developer, we write dozens of unit tests and integration tests, but that's not enough, in my opinion, because applications are depends on many layers. Applications usually interact with one or more other services like database, and they are also running on Kubernetes, and Kubernetes itself is hosted by cloud vendor like AWS, Azure, or DCP, and whatever. So if your application experiences an outages, you cannot easily detect where is the problem in this pyramid. So we need to identify weaknesses before they manifest in system-wide aberrant behavior, which is why we need to introduce chaos engineering. So what is chaos engineering? In some practice, we do deliberately break our systems to ensure that it's that it can withstand unexpected, un, sorry, unexpected disruptions. This involves formulating a hypothesis, injecting chaos, and observing the application's resilience. Chaos engineering enables teams to identify weaknesses and potential outages in, in infrastructures by inducing chaos in a controlled way. So here's a process of chaos engineering. As you can see, we are selecting target applications, making hypotheses, selecting chaos experiments, injecting chaos, and observing resilience, improving our system. This is the roof, right? So this is a cycle we keep on repeating for achieving resilience. And Rhythmus Chaos is a cloud-native chaos engineering tool. It's a CNC incubating project. It supports cross-cloud, multi-Kubernetes cluster, and GitOps features. And Rhythmus supports various types of chaos, like Kubernetes, cloud vendor-specific chaos, and applications chaos. Chaos experiments are also open source, so you can check in the Rhythmus portal. And also, you can easily make your own chaos experience using Rhythmus SDK. Yes, I know talk is cheap, so let me show you a demo. Here's a GitHub repository I made. OK. Yes. So before we dive into our demo, quickly sharing open source our, I used. Uh, first one is Dapper. Dapper is a di distributed application runtime. You can easily making and op operating in distributed systems with Dapper. 
And Grafana K6 is a road testing tool. You can inject roads with simple JavaScript code. I will show you later. And Prometheus is a, one of the most popular in CNCF area. It's a monitoring toolkit. You can scrap and export metrics using this tool. And last one is Backstage. It's a developer portal that we can manage a lot of tools at once using Backstage. What we have for the demo today, we have a simple order and delivery applications. As you can see, we, when the user requests an order or the service creates a data to the MongoDB and publishes a message to the queue when the order is completed. And delivery service subscribes messages from the message queue and updates the status of data in MongoDB. A more detailed view. When the order is finished, this order service creates some data like the above to the MongoDB. And after the delivery service subscribe messages, the service updates is delivered set to true. So here are some V1's overall architecture. I will inject in chaos using Rhythmus Chaos. What we want to do disrupt today is a message queue. We will make a rows to our application using Grafana K6 and deleting a message queue part. So before recreating a chaos experiment, we need to set a hypothesis. Uh, it's a hypothesis. And in our service, when sending 100 requests per second to the order application, all messages should be delivered to the delivery application without rows, even if the message queue part is randomly deleted. And with this hypothesis, we can make two chaos engineering plans. First of all, we will make a row to our application. We're going to request 100 requests per second. After injecting chaos, all data must have its delivered set to true. We will use CMD proof to validate. And simultaneous with the above chaos, we will delete a queue part. After chaos injection, the queue, uh, the queue part should be recreated and performed normally. We will use a HTTP proof to validate it. So here's a timeline. And the yellow one is a ramp time. And ramp time refers to the waiting time. And the part deleting chaos will occur concurrently with road testing tool. Road, road testing chaos, sorry. So let's chaos. Yes, uh, here's a GitHub repository I made. You can also using your own chaos experiment plans with these below instructions. And first of all, you can check out all of the deployed paths here using kube control get all command, but you know, you don't have to do that because that part supports a de nice dashboard. So in this dashboard, you can check out a lot of things like status of the applications and the summary, metadata, configuration, and logs. And you can also check out the that part's components like the state store or pop sub and whatever. So in this demo, I'm using the pop sub pop sub uh, pop sub queue uh, using RabbitMQ. So yeah, and Depor also supported a scrap and export metrics to the Prometheus and also supporting the Grafana dashboard. So you can check out the uh, deployed system in the Depor, like um, sidecar injection status or whatever, CPU usage, memory usage, and you can check out each component status, like number of coroutines or throughput latency and yeah, uh, inbound request, outbound request. And uh, here is a RabbitMQ dashboard. You can check out the node or incoming messages, outgoing messages. Yes, right? Let's jump into the Litmus Chaos. Before we explaining about what is Litmus Chaos, we must uh, running this Chaos experiment first because it's time consuming job. OK. So in Chaos Hub, you can find the predefined list of predefined chaos like uh, AWS Chaos, Azure Chaos, GCP Chaos, and Kubernetes Generic Chaos here. And as I said before, you can make your own Chaos Fort using Litmus SDK. And here's a proof. Proof is a programmable check and 
validate whether your system is in a steady state. And I'm using two proofs in the demo one. The first proof is a assert RabbitMQ is running. So in this proof, they request an API to the system and validate whether it, the RabbitMQ pod is up and running using this uh, URL and response code. And second one is assert is delivered true. And this proof is a CMD proof. And in this command line, we are using core method. And its API returns a number of data, which is delivered set to false, which means its messages are rows. So the return of the result should be 0 if no message rows. And in environment tabs, you can set up like multi-cluster chaos experiments plans, like uh, you can set up one control plane Kubernetes cluster and uh, connecting with other execution planes like GCP, AWS, or Azure, or Alibaba Cloud, whatever you want. And yes, it's an, you can make chaos experiments here. If you're clicking this new experiment and typing one, typing a name and selecting a infrastructure, you can see that blank space. You can make your own chaos experiments, like combinations of chaos experiments here. You can easily uh, add using GUI environment, or you can also write a chaos experiment using YAML file, but I like GUI pro, uh, environment. So if I click this button, you can check out the uh, predefined chaos experiments. As I said before, the chaos hub. So in this situation, I'm going to taking a road testing. So I'm using this K6 road generator. It's developed by community. So I'm clicking, when I'm clicking this button, you can set up like metadata here. So here's a total cloud chaos duration. I'm going to use in 60 seconds, and the chaos interval will be 15 seconds, and runtime will be 15 seconds. And uh, you can use the K a uh, KCX script file here using Kubernetes secret object. And where is the, yeah, here's the script file. It's on KCX JavaScript code block. And uh, we are requesting the, to the older applications using post method here. And all, all of the, uh, the most important thing is the virtual users is 100, which meaning uh, we are requesting 100 users per second, and total duration is 60 seconds. Yes, it's simple code block. And after writing this script, we can move to proofs tab, and you can set up the pluggable check here. And as I said before, I'm gonna using assert is, is delivered true. When I create, when I using this button, we can set up where when is the proof executed. So you can set up proofs to the start of the test or end of the test or edge case, whatever you want. So I'm using the end of the test here. Apply changes. And in parallel, we are using a pod delete chaos. So I'm using this add button below the K6 road generator chaos. And we are clicking the pod delete chaos here. When I'm clicking this button, we can t set up the target applications. We are uh, our RabbitMQ's uh, paths are deployed but in the stateful set. So uh, you are targeting the stateful set and namespace is v1. And targeting the namespace that uh, Robert's that name is pops up. And you can tune for it. Also, you are using 50 seconds of RAM time. And you can set up proofs here. Like right? I'm going to using this proof. And also end of the test. And apply changes, and when you save this save this experiment and running this per experiment, you can yeah run in chaos experiment. But we have on we have a predefined chaos experiments before, so let me check. And here's our result of the chaos experiment. We can see that our uh, score is just 50 percent. So it means that we we have we are not a resilient system now. So in details, we can see that, yeah, the actual message rules occurs over 1,000. So it means that we have 
mes too many message rows. So when we go to the RabbitMQ cluster metrics Grafana dashboard, so we can see that the nodes are down and up and also yeah, incoming messages are going up and down. Okay, all right. So let's get back to the presentations. So what's the problem of version one? Uh, we have some problems of version one. Uh, first of all, the order service fails to publish messages when the queue part is deleted. And also, uh, when a message queue part is deleted, the stored messages are deleted with it and cannot be discovered. So we need to prevent message loss, and here's our changes. I changed two things, and first of all, I adopted a transactional outbox pattern, and second one, I deployed RabbitMQ as a high availability mode. So uh, here's an overall architecture of version two. Version two adds some changes. We are using Redis as a state store for the outbox pattern, and so now we can ensure message publishing, and that part supports Outbox pattern, so you don't have to change your application code. Thanks for thanks to Depper, and also we deploy RabbitMQ as a high ability mode, and message can be can still be recovered if a mess RabbitMQ pod is deleted because another pod mirror scene has recovered it. So let's chaos again. We can run experiment using this button. And you can also inject in chaos periodically like cron job. Uh, yes, here's nothing changes. We are using same chaos experiment like chaos K6 root generator and Padrid chaos. All the different thing is just changing URL. So you can check the same JavaScript code and you can check the same deployment area here. So you can see that our chaos, chaos is running and if we go into the version two, yeah, we can see that not yet injected chaos. Right, it's time consuming job, so let me back to slides first. Yes, uh, we can manage all the things at once with backstage. So let me show you a demo. Yes, here's a backstage. It's a main overview page. And when you go into the pop sub components, you can see that a lot of things at once. Uh, First of all, you can see that list of dashboard here, Grafana dashboard, and you can see that uh, the whole things Grafana here. And also you can see that overview of Rhythmus Chaos, which is uh, the number of experiment runs and chaos, number of chaos hubs and all other important things. And in the Rhythmus tab, here's more detailed uh, plugin here, and you can see that the dev, dev infos or number of chaos hub and environments here. And also the cool thing is that you can run a chaos experiment directory using backstage. So if you're clicking this button, you can run a, uh, run a chaos experiment. So let me check this chaos experiments. Yeah, chaos is injecting now. So when you're going there, you can see that number of nodes are going down and up. And you can also see that incoming messages are maybe over 100 requests per second. And yes, it's time consuming job. So we're going to uh, see that the previous result. So in this chaos experiment, you can see that we have no message rules and got a 100% score. So it means that uh, in this hypothesis, we achieved that hypothesis. And, and the result of the test, we can say that we have a resilient system. And uh, in a backstage, you can running a version one's chaos experiment using this command, using this button. And 
you can see that our version one is also running now. And you can see also that our version one is running. Yes, you can see that our version one is running. We are running this experiment using backstage. So let's get back to those presentations. Yeah, so you can make your own chaos experiment using Litmus Chaos. It's a cloud-native open source chaos engineering platform so that you can easily make your own chaos experiment even if you are not that good at uh, programming or you are not that good at uh, knowing uh, distributed systems. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, do you have any questions? You can talk with me at the downstairs. Okay, thank you. Thanks, everyone.